I keep making videos telling you guys all the reasons why you need to overclock and unlock the full potential of the hardware that you own. And every single time I do that, some of you push back telling me you're too scared, you're too afraid you're gonna break something, and you just are really not comfortable doing that. Well, today I'm going to intentionally overclock some stuff too far, and I'm gonna show you how to get it back. And hopefully by the end of this video, put you at ease that it's harder to break your stuff than you really think it is. With its unique freeform modular system, the new Mastercase Maker 5 from Cooler Master allows unparalleled flexibility with its adjustable internal layout and exterior customization options. Learn more about how you can start customizing your own case by following the link down in the description. Now this, as you might recognize, is MSI Afterburner. We're gonna use MSI Afterburner for simply the sake of simplicity today because it does pretty much apply to all the different overclocking utilities. But we're also gonna make sure we have this button checked right here that says startup. Now what that does is it means apply the overclock to the graphics card at Windows startup, whether MSI Afterburner is running or not. Now there is a separate setting in here where you can start MSI Afterburner with Windows. Um, I use it, I set it minimized, that way I can monitor things like temps. But we're going to just let this thing go uh, by applying the overclock when we start up Windows. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, you know what? We're gonna overclock this thing 100 megahertz. And we're gonna go, oops, and we're gonna apply it to 1000 megahertz, and we're gonna hit apply. And we don't realize we did that, right? Because it, it, it didn't do anything right now. It just simply said, oh, we're gonna apply 1000 megahertz when we ramp up the GPU. So you don't realize you actually did that. You're going about your business. You might start up here. Oh, uh-oh. Well, shit, now what? Ah, oh, okay, well, that's, 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 that's easy. We'll just go ahead and do a, we'll just do a, a soft reset on the PC. We'll just hit that reset button. Now, at first, it's not really much of a problem because what we've got right here is, uh, well, it didn't do anything until we tried to load up our um, browser, which is actually GPU accelerated. I'm using Chrome. And then we go to restart the system. We go, oh man, what happened? Did something go wrong with my overclock? And you start panicking and you think, oh no, I think I just broke my card. A big purple screen, that can't be good. I think, I think my graphics card's dead. Oh crap. And then you start to reboot into Windows. And uh, yeah, you patiently wait. You're, you're tapping your fingers on the key, on the, on the desk and you're going, uh-oh, uh-oh, I shouldn't have listened to Jay. That big fat ass told me to overclock my graphics card and now it's broken. I should have never listened to him. So then we get into our desktop here and we go, oh, thank God, everything's working. Whew. Well, that could have been, uh-oh, what the? And it black screens on you, complete hard lock. And you're going, oh man, what the hell? Because guess what? We're applying that thousand megahertz on startup. So now when Windows is starting, it's going, let's go ahead and just push an extra gigahertz to our graphics card because you weren't paying attention. And now you're thinking, oh crap, I broke my card. But you didn't. You simply applied a little bit too far of an overclock. Now the point of today's video is gonna be how to get that overclock fixed. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could actually take, and this is, this is a little bit simpler where it doesn't involve going into startup or dealing with any of that, you can take your spare GTX 980 Ti because you all have spare 980 Ti's, right? You can take this, turn off the system, remove the graphics card that's being applied too far of an overclock right now, plug this guy in, start up the system and it will be fine because there's no saved profile for this. So if we did that right now, we would get to our desktop and everything would work fine. You could then go in and you could uninstall MSI Afterburner, don't save the profiles and reinstall it or just delete the profile for the GTX 1080. Chances are you don't know how to do that, which is why you're watching this video, or maybe you're just curious. Chances are also that you don't have a spare GTX 980 Ti or even a spare graphics card of any sort sitting around. As long as you have a different graphics card that isn't the same chipset as the one you've got, like a 980 Ti, different variations of 980 Ti, it would still apply the overclock. So you don't want to use another same generation or same GPU graphics card. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and hit restart on the system one more time. Now my system actually hangs so much that the restart button doesn't actually do anything. I actually, I have to hold down the power button to get it to cycle. What we're hoping right now is that it will bring up the startup options. Usually Windows 10, I'm using Windows 10 is a little different. Windows 10 is usually pretty good about realizing that crap. We didn't load properly, so we need to bring up our, our startup menu. Let's hope it does that. And nope, it didn't. You would know because it would say, please wait down here at the bottom if it was loading up the recovery environment. Since it's not, we're going back into our desktop and we are going to probably crash. Now I'm gonna try holding the shift modifier right now while we're booting. Cause sometimes that will keep it from 
actually loading that particular profile. Nope, it did. The, it, now we got a green screen. Last time, the first time was a purple screen, then it was a black screen. Now it's a green screen. So I guess now we could like do special effects and stuff. Nope, not really. Okay, so we're restarting one more time. This is the third failed start. So what we should get now is an actual recovery environment from Windows. Windows, hopefully, is smart enough to realize, uh oh, we uh we're not we're not booting properly. He keeps hitting that reset button. So let's try and recover. Ah, there it is. See, it says, please wait. So Windows has now detect detected that we're having a failed boot situation here. That's a good thing. Windows 10 will do that automatically. If you're not on Windows 10 and this isn't happening, and you keep getting this failed boot process, try holding down and mashing F8 while you're booting and you should get into the same menu that we're gonna have right now. So if you're on Windows 8 or older, then start pushing uh, F8. Now don't do restart my computer. Go to see advanced options, go to troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, and we want to enable safe mode. So we're going to start here with our startup options, which is going to give you where we can boot in safe mode and we can do our um, safe mode with networking and all that stuff, command prompt. We don't need any of that. We just want regular old safe mode. Okay, now once it restarts, you're going to be given some options here of how to actually boot. We want number four, safe mode. We don't need networking. We don't need command prompt. We just want regular old safe mode. So I'm pushing number four. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to boot up the system in safe mode and we're going to uninstall MSI Afterburner. Simple enough, right? Yeah, pretty simple. Now, because we're in safe mode, none of the other apps are going to be able to open. It's literally just a bare bones architecture that allows Windows to run with minimal things and activated. So all we have to do now is go to programs and setting or features. And then we can go into our MSI Afterburner, uninstall and change, uninstall. No, you want to say no, you don't want to save the profiles because if you do, when you reinstall with MSI Afterburner, you're going to apply the same problem again. So say no, you don't want to save uh, any of these settings. Once this is done, simple enough, you re just restart your system and you will end up back in your regular operating system with MSI Afterburner uninstalled. You can reinstall it and this time pay a little bit more attention to what you're doing. Now, what if you don't want to go through all that? but you actually have a spare 980 Ti or I'm just, I'm joking guys. You don't need a 980 Ti. You can use any graphics card. That's not the same graphics card that you have in there. So don't use another 980 Ti if you have one in there. Don't use another 1080 if you have a 1080 in there. Use something else. Just use another graphics card that's not the same as the one that you have in there. And we're back at the desktop now and you can see that we're not crashing because MSI Afterburner, which would be sitting right there, is no longer installed. So it's not gonna apply a funky overclock that keeps crashing your settings. So now you can re-download MSI Afterburner or reinstall it, pay a little bit more attention to what you're clicking and off you go. But I wanted to point out, we just applied a thousand megahertz overclock to the GPU multiple times and we didn't break it. It's still here and it still works. Let me go ahead and show you how to do it now with the spare GPU method. But first thing I gotta do is I have to break it again. Now it might seem a little ridiculous that I'm actually showing you guys here the actual process of switching out the graphics card, but that's called, it's called creative freedom. It's America. We got freedom. Actually, it's the internet. There are, I don't know if there are. Are there territorial boundaries to the internet? I don't know. I'm sure there are, or else how else could North Korea and China block it off? So anyway, let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. This guy's always a little bit tricky to get out because of that, that big old button I showed you guys in the review of this guy. Anyway, we're now gonna take the 980 Ti. This is the same reboot where I turned it off and we had the failed start. So I haven't done anything other than throw in a different graphics card, plugging in our monitor cable there. We need we need power, right? I mean, it, it needs some power. It needs, it needs some old spice in here. There we go. Let's start it up. Once we swap the graphics card, all we gotta do is power it on and wait. Now, if this thing doesn't make me a complete and utter liar, you'll see that not only will we start up, everything will be working just fine. Okay, there's our Windows logo. Our little spinning wheel. We're logging in here, test bench. And I, you, can, you can obviously see, because now it's at a native 4K, not 1080 like I had the other card, that everything is working just fine. So moral of the story here, guys, is don't be afraid. Play with it. Play the, the graphics card. Yeah, that's what we're talking about here. Keep it clean, guys, keep it clean. Now this whole black flickering screen you just saw, it just re-scaled uh, the desktop back to 1080 because that's where I had it before. And as you can see, everything is working just fine. 
So there you go. After applying a thousand megahertz overclock multiple times, all you saw happen was a crash. Nothing broke on the graphics card. Nothing will break on the graphics card because all we applied was a software change. We didn't force more voltage to it. And if it can't run at the frequency, all it's gonna do is it's just gonna crash. Nothing bad is gonna happen. And I showed you it's not hard to recover even from something that looks on the surface like you have a bad graphics card or it broke. It really takes a lot to break these things, guys. They are very robust. Unless you're going in there doing voltage mods and applying more voltage, way more voltage and even something like MSA Afterburner will allow, then you're not gonna break your graphics cards. There's free untapped potential in there. You guys need to tap it. It's gonna give you better gaming experiences, higher FPS, and we all know that FPS is more important than graphical quality. That doesn't make any sense at all, actually. Whatever. We want graphics quality and we want FPS. If you overclock it, you can have both. All right, guys, time to get out of here. Come up with some more excuses, and I'll come up with another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.